On today's show, the Houston Rockets 11-game winning streak unfortunately snapped by Luka Doncic and the Dallas Mavericks. Why the Rockets' defensive game plan was a disaster against Luka, how they need to be better offensively when teams are double-teaming Jalen Green, Jabari Smith Jr. with a strong game, and Cam Whitmore makes his return to the Rockets lineup. It's all coming up on today's Locked on Rockets. This is Mission Control, Houston. Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Well, the winning streak was fun. While it lasted, what's up and welcome to another edition of Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball. As always, I'm your host, Jackson Gatlin, native Houstonian and credentialed media member. I'm also the host of Locked on NBA Mondays. Be sure to follow along on Twitter at JT Gatlin. And the show, of course, at Locked on Rockets, free and available wherever you listen to your podcasts, including YouTube. Now, as always, thank you so much for making Locked on Rockets part of your day every single day, whether it's on your way to work, on your lunch break, in the gym. Thank you for being an everyday or making the show part of your day every Every single day. The Houston Rockets 11 game win streak comes to an unfortunate end and here to break down what exactly went wrong against the Dallas Mavericks is none other than your weekly co-host NBA draft enthusiast and diehard Houston Rockets fan Madison Amore. He can track down on Twitter at Madman Leaks and Madison this 125 107 loss the Dallas Mavericks snapping the Houston Rockets winning streak it ends at 11 it was a magical month of March still a lot of positives to be taken not a lot of positives from this game unfortunately as we're going to have to navigate and unpack exactly what went wrong in this game couple silver linings Jabari Smith Jr.'s play Cam Whitmore back in the Rockets lineup a great sight to see to have him back on the floor for the Rockets we'll talk about their performances we'll talk about some of the concerns with the offense in this game namely from guys like Dylan Brooks and Amin Thompson but I think the Big takeaway here, man, is what in the hell was Ime Udoka smoking when he came up with this Rockets <laughs> game plan? Because he let Luka absolutely cook the Rockets in this game. 22 first quarter points. He finished the game with 47, 18 of 30 from the floor, 9 of 16 from downtown, tying his career high in three-pointers made. And the Rockets refused to to double team and they let Luca cook in single coverage all night long. I think this loss is almost square. Like there was a lot of issues in this game, but I think the by and large, this loss is squarely and firmly on Ime Odoka's shoulders for the defensive game plan coming into this game. Yeah, I think that was probably, there was a lot of issues tonight, but that was the biggest issue. I'm actually not super upset with the Rockets having that as their game plan. Hey, we don't want Luca to be, we don't want Luca to get everyone else involved. Uh, we'll, we'll do this pseudo thing when they did with Jokic. But I, I think that's a fundamental misunderstanding of who, uh, Luca is as a player. I think in underestimating that. And number two, the lack of adjustments once you realize that this, this wasn't going to work. After the first quarter, there should have been an immediate adjustment. Honestly, after the second Jacques Landale Island trip, there should have been immediate adjustment, can, can at I least actually, in that I, particular lineup. Can I actually back it up even further? I think that. I, shout out to Ime Odoka for having the, the the confidence in his wing defenders in in Amin Thompson and Dylan Brooks to to go one on one with Luca. I get that, but the moment you had to the, the moment you lost Amin Thompson to the two early fouls, yep. I think that's where the adjustment probably had to take place because that was the issue. Is Lu, uh, Amin was actually pretty decent on Luca in his minutes guarding mm -hmm. him. Uh, you know, he he bit on a couple fakes here and there, but overall, I think the the length, the athleticism, right? He was doing a, a good job on Luca. He was disciplined. But the moment you lost him into the two early fouls, that's, I think, where, okay, maybe you throw that defensive game plan out the window because now you don't have arguably your best defender on the floor anymore. Yeah, that I, I agree. That also should have been, you know, maybe sometimes you think, well, let's play it out. Let's see how it goes. We'll yeah. get him back for the rest of the game. But, I mean, just, it, it, you know, we can give you the benefit of the doubt on that. But after that first quarter, like there was no excuse uh, for the type of heater you let a, a great player get on to continue to play them one on one uh, as as uh, M.A. did all night tonight. I thought it was uh, kind of depressing. And I thought also by playing this way, the Rockets offense was also very stagnant um, and we really needed some juice in transition. 
you know, and the only way to, to generate that is to start to to really ratchet up the aggressiveness of your defense. You you have nothing to lose right now. Your team is getting, they couldn't getting get absolutely stops. yeah, they, 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 they couldn't get any stops, stops and they couldn't get, get easy run. buckets. Yeah. You can't yeah, you can't get easy buckets and your team can't get in, uh, into rhythm offensively. And so like to me, I thought it, it hurt us both ways. And it was honestly it's a, these games are played in runs and those runs are dictated by energy. And and when you, you sap the energy of your team, when you just allow the same thing to happen over and over again. And I mean, I, I'll just leave it at there for now. <laughs> yeah. Look, look I, I, you know, at one point in this game near the end of the third quarter, I put my tinfoil hat on because the Rockets actually, and this was the, this was the part that really bothered me. Madison is they didn't double Luca at all. Right. Let it, let the man go off for 22 in the first quarter. And then the Mavs are running their second unit. They stagger Kyrie and Luka, so Kyrie's running the second unit. It was like one of the first two possessions in that second quarter. They doubled Kyrie Irving. He had zero points. I didn't know what was happening. I like I could not wrap my head around the fact that they let Luka go off for 22 in the first quarter, and then Kyrie, who was sitting with a with a goose egg, zero, zero points, and then they flashed a double team at him. I was like, what is happening? So, look, but I put my tinfoil hat on at the end of the third quarter because I thought, hey, at that point, it was the final few minutes of the third quarter. Third quarter the Rockets started doubling Luka. They started trapping him. They started getting really aggressive with him. And it led to some good possessions, right? Rockets finished that quarter on a 13-4 to run, went into the fourth quarter, 18-point game. I'm thinking, oh, maybe right. this was Ime's game plan. Like, let Luka do all the heavy lifting for two and a half, three quarters, whatever, to keep all the other players from being in rhythm and go into the final quarter and like make a push. Right. And I like, I like, I talked myself into this idea going to the fourth quarter. And then Kyrie basically told me, nah, that's not going to happen. Kyrie lit up in the fourth quarter, the rest of the Mavs, the the other guys then stepped up in that fourth quarter. It was, it was game over, man. And like, it was too little too late, man. I mean, to me, like, bro, you, how do you go into halftime? How do you go into halftime? Look at how this game is going and come out and do the exact same thing on defense. I, I I really, I really is. This is one of those things that MA, like you really dropped the ball on this. I mean, if we had any chance of getting back in this game, we needed to come out immediately being more aggressive on defense. And they didn't start that to the end of the second quarter, to the second half of the se- second quarter, where they went on another like 8-0 run. They had extended the lead to almost 30. So, I mean, it, it was, it was very, very tough to watch. And I, I I felt like because their offense was clicking so well, we could not get out in transition. We could not get easy buckets, and our rhythm suffered our offense because of it. It didn't help, right? That that not only was Luca absolutely on a heater in this game, but us, the other Mavs did step up when they needed to. Kyrie finished with twenty four mm-hmm. after inter. He might have been in single digits numbers wise going into the fourth quarter. I can't remember exactly what he had. Um, there were some big threes from PJ Washington off the bench. Dante Exum, Rockets former uh, former legend. Uh, uh, Dante Exum, he had 13 off the bench, three of three from downtown. Tim Hardaway hit a few threes. They just got enough contributions offensively mm-hmm. from all the other guys. Rockets struggled to shoot the ball in this one, just under 35%, 13 of 38. Uh, some of those obviously coming in garbage garbage time, quote unquote, in the fourth quarter. Mavs kept their starters in. At no point did it really feel like, you know, there was like a real garbage time in this game. The Rockets kind of kept the lead pushing a little bit, but it wasn't like a real comeback or anything. This this was this game was lost because Luca is an insane player. Like, the, yeah. and I'm sorry, I'm sorry, we have to highlight it here. That damn scoop shot that he hit <laughs> was something. He was out there playing horse. He was just toying with the Rockets. Like, like at that point, after he hit that shot. You could hear Hollins on the broadcast all game. He was like, get the ball out of his hands. Send a double. You can't guard him in single coverage. Hollins was losing his mind because he's been out there. He's been a player watching these guys cook at the NBA level. And you just know, like, when a guy is on a heater like that, you have to get the ball out of his hands. You have to make literally anybody else beat you. And I know you mentioned it earlier. We've seen this this game plan from Ime before. Let the star player cook. Stay at home on everybody else. I think the, you said it was a fundamental misunderstanding of who these players or who Luca is, though. I fully agree. Luca is absolutely a guy that can carry an offense for all four quarters. He can go for 60 plus, 70 plus, 80 plus, whatever. Like, I was legit worried after the first quarter. This is up. Oh, this is going to be the night that somebody breaks Kobe's, Kobe's 81. Like, I saw yeah. it and I was like, if they're going to guard him in single coverage, Luca could put up 20 a quarter for the rest of this game. So, I mean, passively switching happen. too, just giving him his matchup, whatever matchup he wanted. Like, yep. Oh man, it was uh it was very tough to watch. It's one of those things that 
hey, M.A., you got to go to back to the drawing board on, on how stubborn you are. Like, usually he's made really, really good adjustments. But we're just going to – I mean, coaches have bad nights too, man. We'll just – we'll just, you know, and Every- and it, it's not crazier than what Steve Kerr did with Jalen Brown. So, at least it ain't that bad. <laughs> hey, man, look, <laughs> everybody's got an off night. Emei's yeah. been, been an incredible coach for this Rockets team. This this loss, though, it's a, it's a learning experience for him. It's a learning yeah. experience for the team as a whole. And the best mm-hmm. part is Rockets are going to get a chance at redemption exactly a week from – Sunday because they play the Mavs again in Dallas. So they'll get a chance for some redemption. Please, dear God, let's see some adjustments and let's not see a Luca one-on-one uh, ISO showing again in Dallas. But coming up, we're also going to talk about some of the offensive struggles from this game. Jalen Green getting double teamed all night long. Some of the issues uh, offensively with Dylan Brooks and Amin Thompson, a pair of rough games for them. And then we've got to highlight some of the couple silver linings from this one as well. Jabari Smith Jr., Cam Whitmore, a couple strong games from those two guys. We're going to get there in just one moment. First, today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than 3 million members. It is the easiest and most exciting way to get in on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. You just pick more or less on two or more players' stats and watch the winnings roll in. Prize Picks is so simple to play. You can make your picks and submit an entry in less than 60 seconds. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players and stat types are what makes Prize Picks the number one DFS app on the market. And look, Playoff action is right around the corner in the NBA. You can win up to 100 times your money on prize picks as you and the best players in the world take the game to a new level during the NBA postseason. So if you've been thinking about getting into daily fantasy sports, try prize picks. Download the app today and use code LOCKEDONNBA for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, download the app and use promo code LOCKEDONNBA for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize picks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. And continuing on here at Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball. Now, Madison, we kind of took care of the the elephant in the room, which was the Rockets defensive game plan on Luka. Hat tip, Luka's an incredible player. You know, it is what it is, right? There's a reason he's very much heavily in the MVP conversation this year. Feels like it's probably going to be, you know, go to Jokic. But, you know, at this point, I would not be upset if I, if, well, I'd be upset seeing Luca win it because Dallas Mavericks, ew. But like, just as a basketball purist, as a fan, Luca absolutely has a right to that award. He's been sensational this season. But for the Rockets, the defense wasn't their only problem in this game. Offensively, the Mavs had the Rockets in fits. They couldn't get into anything uh, successful offensively. And a big part of that was they saw, like, credit to Jason, Jason Kidd and the Mavericks' defensive mm-hmm. game plan. They saw the kind of tear that Jalen Green was on, and they decided, you know what? We're not going to let him beat us. And they doubled him all night long. They did not ever get him, you know, get let him get a clean look at anything. Finished the game 5 of 15 shooting, 0 of 5 from long distance, only got to the free throw line twice. Um, six rebounds, five assists, finished with 12 points. It, it, it isn't necessarily that Jalen had a quote unquote bad game. He just had an entire defense game plan against him. And at no point did the Mavs let up. They were like, this is our game plan from the, from the jump to the final buzzer. We're not letting Jalen Green beat us. And it worked. Yeah, I thought I thought the way they trapped Jalen as well, because they didn't do like this aggressive trap where he had to pick the ball up and get it out of his hands. They kind of just led him to the baseline with two people like they just kind of they gradually, you know, they and they covered a lot of his passing lanes. A lot of the guys that that was left open was at the top of the key and they did a very good do- job of shading that. So the only pass he really could make was to the to the to the uh, role man in the middle of the paint who would then have to make another pass to to find the open guy because they were packing the paint on that on those possessions too and oftentimes we've seen that result in a turnover or, or just a, a misread or a bad read in, in the plays I thought uh I thought Jabari came out and hit a couple good uh threes early but other than Jabari in this in this first half before the like before the game got away from us I thought it was just a very poor performance from Fred Van Vliet and Dylan Brooks um I thought Fred Van Vliet I, I feel like he only took one shot in the first half and uh, really quiet night for him he only had four shots overall and and yeah yeah, because you talked about right the way the Mavs were cutting off some of those 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 safety valves those passing lanes it felt like that oftentimes the way that they were shading Jalen defensively and kind of funneling him they were cutting off that outlet to get the ball back to Fred yes and and the reason they were able to do that the reason they were able to be so aggressive with Jalen this feels like the first game where we've really seen it was it was a two 
two-parter here. Dylan not being able to throw a rock into the freaking mm-hmm. ocean was a big one. O of eight shooting, O of seven from downtown. And then Amin Thompson, this this felt like the one of the first real games where mm-hmm. we're like, uh, okay, the lack of shooting is really hurting yeah. this team. Whoever the Mavs had guarding them in, whether it, you, oftentimes it was their big, but whoever was guarding them in, whoever picked them up was basically just playing free safety defensively. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. And, and that's what te- most teams do, uh, do. But the the biggest thing that allowed the Mavs to do that is their great rim protectors as well. Like, I, I feel like, uh, uh, you know, Gafford and a man couldn't get behind that defense. That defense was sunk in and we did find a man on that backside, but the guys were there. Like they were, they were, they were sucking in. They were, they were ready for that backside uh, cut from Amin. And he, a couple of times he got his shot blocked and that's very rare to see Amin uh, get his shot blocked with his athleticism on those backside plays. And I think that the Dallas's defense was so, so steady the the entire game that entire first half the start of the second half it really got away from the Rockets I feel like they start they stopped playing the correct way um, and I really think it was just uh, more of a lack of adjustments again offensively we needed some to misdirection uh, uh, plays drawn up for easy buckets for other guys using Jalen's gravity using using these things against the uh, the Mavs and I really think there was just the the lack of of uh, flow in this offense led to a lot of one-on-one and quick early threes. And it just was not good at offense generated. And I would have liked to see some back doors set up, you know what I mean? Like some, some, some plays run where there was a design back door, even and, and the crazy thing is the Mavs were doing just that. There was like these Dante Exum layups where he was where he was crossing um, and making, uh, you know, miscommunications on the screens, on the the switches. And he was getting wide open layups at the rim. It's It seemed like Jason Kidd was kind of just out coaching in at, at, at every aspect tonight. It was it was rough to see. And I, I you know, again, I'm not going to in this game. It's tough to fault Jalen because, again, he he got no, yeah. he, he got ha- he handled with double teams all game. And when that happens, right, when you are when your star player is when your best guy is getting doubled, it's up to the other guys because you're getting mm-hmm. to play four on three. Right. And, and oftentimes Jalen, there were maybe some points where he was, you know, maybe a little late on, on getting rid of the ball on some of these double teams. Some of the decision making out of the doubles wasn't as good as it's been throughout this Rockets 11 game win streak. But it's not that he wasn't like, it's not that he was getting trapped and coughing the ball up. It's not like he had a mount of turnovers in this game. It was just other guys just could not execute out mm-hmm. of those doubles. And to your point about the kind of the choppy offense, right? It often felt like the Rockets were, you know, Jalen would get the double, right? And then, you know, first pass out of the double would happen. And, and it's like they were taking the very first shot that was available, right? Mm-hmm. Like, exactly. even if it was like an okay shot, like Dylan would hoist a shot exactly. or a men would catch the ball and then immediately, like, I got to attack now. Like, I got to go. And yes, that's just impression. not the way you play it, right? They needed to take a breath, be a little bit more patient, and execute properly in the half court. How do you, if, if, if a team is going to willingly double team your best guy, that means you have an advantage somewhere else on the floor. And it really felt like, again, Dylan and a men didn't have great games uh I think Jabari and Fred Fred finishing with only four shots is a travesty and and Jabari as good as he was in this game we're going to talk about his play here in a moment he should have been more involved in the Mm -hmm. offense finishing with only 14 shots is kind of crazy based on how good he looked in this game he couldn't miss yeah and I think they didn't find out that Jabari was was so hot because of the lack of flow of this offense. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He got those two early shots, but you didn't know if those were just some good shots that Jabari made. But then by the time we found out, hey, Jabari actually is having is, is really feeling it tonight, it was too late. The game was out was out of hand. And it, it just it's just an unfortunate thing. But there is, I think, a lot of good that comes from this game. Uh this is gonna be perfect film work for Jalen to work on what he needs to do to better break this stuff down before what the team needs to do to better break this, uh, break this stuff down. Um, I think this, this will give to me, I've been afraid of Jalen really starting to get doubled really hard. I know that's coming for him now and he needs to see that before, you know, got, we, we make it to the play in and then teams are really keyed in on the playoffs. I like that. We got some really good film on this. So, so the guys can go to the drawing board and really learn how they can break this down. And one more uh, note for, for any of the, 
uh, people who are shouting from the mountaintops that, that Jalen and Shingun can't coexist, that they can't work together. Wow. This is exactly why you want another guy like an Alper and Shingun to pair with a Jalen Green, because if you had had Al P out there, you can't double Jalen. If you do double Jalen, then you're giving Al P a four on three advantage to break down a defense with his insane skill set or vice versa, right? You can't, if, if Al P has the ball down low, whatever, you can't send a double team at him mm-hmm. because his outlet pass is to a dynamic scoring wing or guard like Jalen Green, right? That's why when you have two guys that command that level of attention, the other guy can step up once you start doubling. That's exactly what we saw happen on the Mavericks side of things, right? The Rockets started forcing the ball to Luka Doncic's hands, and guess what? Kyrie Irving was there to step up in the fourth quarter and was able to close this game out. So Luka, you know, did did all the heavy lifting through like three quarters, and then the Mavs were able to coast and take the game home at the very end because they had other guys who could step up, namely, again, Kyrie Irving, who took the reins there in the fourth quarter and uh, led the Mavericks home in this one. Coming up, we want to talk about Jabari Smith Jr., his strong night, his involvement in the Rockets offense, as well as Cam Whitmore. Good to have him back in the Rockets lineup. He's going to be a big piece for this Rockets, trying to make a push for the play-in tournament. And some unfortunate news as the Golden State Warriors were able to beat the San Antonio Spurs. Spurs couldn't do the – nobody could do the Rockets favors, man. This is killing me. We're going to get to this final segment in just one moment. First, today's episode is brought to you by Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball, the NCAA tournament, or the NBA playoffs, you're going to want to have Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us here at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive in on all of the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports, March Madness, NBA, MLB, and so much more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, and cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. To learn more, visit amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. And final segment here at Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball. Now, Madison, a couple of the silver linings, the positives from this game as we kind of sifted our way through a lot of the bad to come out of this one. Uh, Jabari Smith Jr., his play in this game, it felt it felt like a good game for Jabari to try and get back into rhythm. In fact, I, I caught myself wondering at the end why Jabari was out there in those quote unquote garbage time minutes with the rest of the second stringers and third string guys. Uh, and then I, you know, I realized it's likely because Ime wanted him to continue building that rhythm, right? Building that confidence. He's had a few games in a row now, the last you know five, six, seven games where, you know, the, the shooting numbers haven't, haven't been great. He's kind of struggled from the floor. Um, this felt like a good game for him to kind of unlock and get back into the version of Jabari that we know he can be, especially again, when, when teams are now keying in so heavily on Jalen Green, you need your other guys to be able to step up offensively. And Jabari, we know he has the skill set to do it, right? We know that he can be a guy that you can even, at times, arguably run some of your offense through, not necessarily as a play initiator like Jalen, but right, you get him in the high post, you get him with his back to the basket, let him get to some of his sweet spots on the floor, and he can be a guy that can be a consistent go-to bucket, but he's very much a rhythm guy, and it feels like he hasn't really had a good rhythm for the past, you know, two or three weeks, so it was good to see him put up 28, 9 of 14, really got rolling in there in the fourth quarter uh, and it's not like it was like garbage time against the Mavs third stringers right they kept their starters in the game so he was he was doing this against a good Mavs team yeah I mean and like I said we kind of found out that that Jabari was really in rhythm late and I think that's very unfortunate it goes back to what I what I kind of said a couple weeks ago um, about Jabari in this second lineup getting more uh, more touches. This second lineup, to me, has way too much Aaron Holiday ISO. I understand Aaron Holiday had a decent game today. I feel like it was in garbage time when the game was over. That's when he came, That's when he scored his buckets um, and, and when we were blitzing, which was really a defensive scheme issue. But but to me, I think there's just way too much Aaron Holiday ISO. He, need, he is supposed to be a release valve, a support player, a guy that gets us into our sets, and our sets need to be centered around Jabari. Barry Smith and Cam Whitmore in that second in uh, that second unit, especially with how deficient that offense is, and I think one of those reasons is uh, uh, because of Aaron Holiday not properly just being a little bit too aggressive. Um, th- there are other guys that, uh, to me, should be featured, and for us to get rhythm with those guys. Um, so 
I think if Jabari was featured a little bit more uh, earlier in this game, we may have seen that Jabari was having a really good rhythm game uh, a lot earlier. And it really could have helped us in those minutes because I feel like we played neutral in those minutes when we when we honestly could have won those minutes and kept us in the game. I fully when agree, man. Yeah. Give, give, me, give me some Jabari Smith Jr. post-ups in the second unit. Let Cam mm-hmm. Whitmore be the entry passer. They've got the five-out spacing, right? If you send a double team, I, look, and let, let Jabari have the chance to shine, right? This is... You know, now without Alper and Shingun in the lineup, I think there's there's a need for guys to be able to step up on a nightly basis. And I think Jabari Smith Jr. has all the tools to be a really strong second or third option offensively. But there's this level of, I guess, like safety or whatever or, or comfortability that Ime has offensively with just running a lot of, you know, heavy pick and roll actions, running a lot of sets mm-hmm. through the guards, through his wings on the perimeter, a lot of drive and kick offense. And that's not what Jabari Smith Jr. does, right? That's not his offensive repertoire, not his bag. I get that there might be some spacing issues or concerns, like even, you know, in this game, you know, a man had the two early fouls, so he came back with the second unit this time around. So he was out there with Jabari, but you just put him on the opposite side, you know, on the weak side in the dunker spot. Let Jabari go to work, man. I, I, I've been, I feel Even, like this, is, I feel like this is the take that I've had all season long, man. Like, <laughs> I want to see Jabari I mean, have some chances where he can go to work offensively. And, and that's not the only way you can get, uh, you can get Jabari involved in this offense. You can run some down screens where you just get him an open look at three, see where he's at. And even in the mid range, get him coming off a, a, a kind of like a, a curving pin down but in the mid range where he can take it in rhythm um at the free throw line well, like we've seen we've seen that play from the right they've run that, it before with him but at that's the what mid-range. i'm saying there yeah. there are things that you can do that it is does not require jabari to run an iso but gets him in rhythm gets him involved in the offense there are other things you can do you can scheme back doors for him you can you can do things to get him involved that isn't just a mid post isolation you know what i mean you and and you can mix in some of those isolations make some uh especially with a team that's switching, you can get him switched off into a smaller player and get him get the look that he wants. It's, there's things you can do, especially in that second lineup that is so deficient in scoring. It, it doesn't have any offensive punch. And I and I really would like us to, to do that because I think uh, a Jabari in rhythm is going to be better for the entire team. So uh, I'd like to see that uh, moving forward. That's where you really miss not having like a true – like point guard kind of floor general in that mm-hmm. second unit because again even even with the starters sometimes right it's a little bit harder to maybe prioritize oh we're going to get Jabari his looks when when Jalen needs his looks and Fred needs to you know run some of the offense whatever it's it's a little bit tougher there but especially with that second unit right you, you need more from Aaron Holiday you need him to make better decisions rather than just you know oh I'm going to walk the ball up and I'm going to run a pick and roll and, and get to my little she, floater yeah, game in the yeah, mid range yes. right like that's it's a little too much a little too much Aaron Holiday uh, action yeah. offensively with that second unit um 12 shot attempts for Aaron holiday wow that's that's a lot uh, i know Bro, some of that came I, it's, it's an time, issue it's a, it, it's it, to me it's a quiet issue it's, it, it's okay it's okay because look <laughs> reed, reed shepherd is coming that's all that matters <laughs> <laughs> look all right um and we got it we got a highlight here cam whitmore um it's so yes. nice to have him back out there on the floor right he was sorely missed over this month it not I, I can't stop i can't say sorely missed because the rockets obviously had an 11 game win streak they were really successful even though they didn't have cam whitmore in the lineup but he gives the Rockets some of that offensive juice some of that potency in that second unit and we saw it on display in this game right him just the the willingness to pull up from three when necessary mm-hmm. the the downhill play uh even just you know I won't some of the the activity on the glass offensively right in and around mm-hmm. the rim he's just he's a very physical presence when he's on the floor on both sides um and he just gives the Rockets another guy who's not afraid to to go after it offensively and he can be a guy that can catch fire and, and score 20 plus with ease and he was felt like he was kind of on his way to that in this game he had 13 on 5 of 11 shooting only in 22 minutes played but a nice little bounce back for him he had three steals defensively as well and he kind of just he just stepped back in and it looked like he hadn't missed a beat yeah um really proud of Cam's Cam's game he 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 didn't look like he missed a beat honestly but more importantly, I thought that what was big for Cam is sometimes Cam could be a bit trigger happy. And sometimes that worries me, even though he's so good, even though he makes so many shots. But today I seen uh, Cam give a pump fake and attack. And when nothing was there, uh, reverse the ball. You, you know what I mean? Like those simple, small things shows that Cam is thinking the game. He's taking coaching. You know what I mean? I've seen that happen a couple times where, uh, you know, nothing was there. It was good defense and he just ball reversal. You know what I mean? And that is smart basketball. And I think that's a real improvement to see from Cam. That you, you could 
that that is to me a very important thing. And he still was very effective off- offensively tonight. And so I it, I like to see that. I like to see uh, Cam thinking the game, understanding that every time you touch it, you, you know it doesn't have to be this one thing. You don't have to shoot it. You can reverse it and, and let it let the ball come back to you for a better shot or find one of your teammates. So I, I really like Cam. I think he's going to be an excellent addition uh, for this push for the play in, which I, which we still are in. So I think we, I think that'll be great. <laughs> that'll be great to have him in that. Uh, second unit go ahead still in it but damn it do we need some favors from some of the other teams in the nba right my the whole state of florida dropped the ball on the rockets last week now you got you know your your i-10 rivals down in san antonio they dropped the ball uh the Spurs losing to the Warriors 117-114, uh, I believe, or 117-113, I think it was. Uh, double check that really quick, make sure I got that. Yeah, 117-113, unfortunately. And man, when I tell you, like, it, it, when I first looked at the score at one point, like midway through the third quarter, I think, of that game, like I saw San Antonio up like 10. I was like, yeah, Spurs, let's go. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> you know, like, por vida, whatever, like all the, whatever the Spurs mottos are. Like, I was over here, I was about to, you know, I'll go, I'll go throw on a Wimby jersey, whatever I need to do for some good luck to get, uh, you know, uh, a Golden State loss because a Golden State loss could have taken a little bit of the sting out of losing this game against yes. Dallas. But now the Rockets are firmly two games back of the Warriors in the standings. They are two games back in the loss column, and that's the most important column, right? You gotta gotta be paying attention to those losses. Now the Warriors have a few a few tough games coming up, but the Rockets are rolling into this gauntlet, man. They got to deal with the Timberwolves here on the road. They got that very very important home game against the Warriors, and then they'll be back on the road a little bit later. Later on against the Dallas Mavericks again uh, mm-hmm. next Sunday. And so it doesn't get any easier for this Rockets team. So if they want to, their, their medal is about to absolutely be tested if they want to make the play in tournament. Yeah, man, I'm proud of these Rockets. If they make this play in tournament, it it's going to be well deserved and well earned. And I think if we make it going through this gauntlet, I think we're going to be a dangerous team to actually uh, uh, make it through the play in and actually make that eight seed. So I'm I'm really optimistic about these guys. This is a good team, man. We you know coming in tonight, I think we were three games over 500. You know, like that. I don't even know. Remember the last. Uh, uh, 11 C that was, uh, that was over 500. That is absolutely ridiculous. This is a really good team and I, and we're going to continue to build on that. The closest comparison I can think there were, there were a few years, right? Remember that one year that the Warriors won like almost 50 games and didn't make the playoffs as like the ninth seed. Um, it was like back in like, I think it was back in 08 that the Warriors won 48 games and didn't make the playoffs as a ninth seed. Now, granted again, no NBA playing tournament. That's not the same as having, you know, an above 500, um, 11th seed but the the sheer dominance from the west that year where the warriors didn't make the playoffs and i think the i think the eighth seed was the nuggets that year and they had 50 wins as an eighth seed that is the is the closest comparison i can think of where the west is just that good where like again we kind of chalked it up to madison coming into the season when we did like our 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 season opener predictions all this the the west was going to be a bloodbath and we chalked Mm -hmm. it up to the spurs and the blazers were going to be out of it the Grizzlies were kind of questionable with missing John Morant. And then once he was down for the season, it was like, all right, Grizzlies are out. And we kind of knew that Utah was probably going to flail at some point and not be a serious, like, you know, mm-hmm. threat to make the play in. We knew that there were going to be 11 teams in the West that wanted to make the play in tournament. We knew that. They, in fact, we actually thought there were going to be 12 with the Grizzlies and, you know, John Morant's pending return. But then obviously all that happened. So I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a bloodbath out West. Um, and the crazy, we're, we're going to be proud of this team regardless. It will be extra proud if they make the play in, but this Rockets team has achieved so much this year. And I don't want, I know this was a, a frustrating, disappointing loss, but I don't want this to take away from how great the Rockets have been in the month of March. Uh, and NBA's NBA best record, 13 and two in the month of March that nobody can take that away from them. Jalen's had a st- super strong month and yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm very proud and excited by this team. Yeah, man, me too, man. Uh, we just got to continue to chip away. It seems, uh, and our vets got, our vets got to step it back up. And I think we'll, <laughs> yeah, come on. Uh, really Dylan, man, D- Dylan, you, you're killing us, man. We, you know, it's, you got to come out you got to come, come through for us so we can get in this play in. But all in all, I mean, I'm very proud of this team. I think it, the season is already a success. So, uh, you know, but we, we want to make this playoffs, man. <laughs> so, know, man. So, so hopefully bad. we'll get in there. Yeah. I need it. I need it. I need it. On that note, Madison, you know the drill. Let everyone know to track you down at. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at, at MadmanLeaks. Come talk Rockets basketball with me.
That's going to do it for another edition of Locked on Rockets. As always, thank you so much for checking out the show. If you haven't done so yet, please consider subscribing wherever you listen to your podcasts or on YouTube. Just search Locked on Rockets. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you're listening via Apple Podcasts, a five-star review helps us out tremendously. But as always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. And we look forward to having you back right here at Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball. <laughs>